Good evening and welcome to Wembley for the 2022 FA Cup final between newly crowned Premier League champions Liverpool and Carabao Cup holders Manchester United. Now the big news ahead of the match is the absence of Liverpool star Mo Salah. So, Aussie villain, can you lead your Manchester United side to victory here this afternoon? Yeah, I certainly hope so, mate. Um, I didn't get dressed up in a suit to come here and lose, that's for sure. You know, but you talk about Liverpool's injury problems. We've got our own issues with Luke Shaw missing this one. Um, but then again, Phil Jones is also injured, so that's a big bonus for us. Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain, and welcome back to Manchester United, our England-only Manchester United. It's episode 15, and today it is the FA Cup final against Liverpool. We're also going to have our end-of-season awards, as well as our, uh, our goal of the season competition. So a lot to look forward to, but a little bit of bad news coming into the final, and that is in the medical centre, because we have lost Luke Shaw. Uh, he's out for another week or two, he's going to miss the final, it's probably season over the final unfortunately doesn't fall as the final game of the year there's still two Premier League games to go about a week to go in the season after this so he might be back for the final Premier League game but we'll see how the table is getting on in just a second but I don't, we're not going to risk him for anything I don't think it's going to necessarily be worth it but uh, yeah we're going to be there without him for the final and that is pretty much all our season has to uh, has to rest on now really so let's catch you up on these two games uh the first one was a big one if we were it was a big one in terms of who's going to get fourth but also in terms of the title race we had to win if we were going to keep that title race alive and uh, Arsenal had to win if they wanted to stay fourth because Villa had overtaken them at this point so let's see how the game played out we took a first half lead when Luke Shaw picked out Harry Kane at the near post Mason Greenwood made it 2-0 with a superb strike. Before Juan Bissaka crossed for Kane to make it 3-0 at halftime. So we blew them away in the first half. They never registered a shot on target in the entire game. A wonderful strike from Greenwood. And Kane, I think, got both his goals from the exact same blade of grass. So uh, maybe a bit of a blind spot there for Arsenal. So a really, really good result on the back of the, the disappointment in the Champions League last episode. The other game to catch you up on was against Watford. They were, if not mathematically relegated, essentially relegated. They, anything other than a win for them would have uh, sent them down. And obviously, we needed a win to keep this title race going. Let's see what happened. We were behind at halftime after a wonderful Watford goal. Rashford pulled us level before Isaac Hayden played in Rashford to put us ahead. So we made hard work of it. We weren't particularly good in the first half, but we started the second half with that penalty very, very early on. And uh, yeah, we never really looked back. The XG tracker can kind of show you uh, how the game, you know, we kicked up in the second half and in the end deserved to win it. Uh, but it wasn't enough to keep the title race alive because unfortunately for us, Liverpool have kept winning. So even though we have a game in hand, Liverpool beat Man City and have won all their other games. So we have two games left. They have one. If we win both those games, we can get to 90 points. That's obviously not going to be enough. But the good news is that uh, with, again, we have that uh, extra game to play. We've got a better goal difference than Manchester City. We're three points ahead. We just need one point from our last two games to uh, to wrap up second in the league. And that, I think, is about as good as we could have realistically, it's better than we could have realistically hoped for. I was really just hoping to uh, squeeze into the top four. And not only have we squeezed in, but so has Aston Villa. They will be a Champions League side next season. Um... Again, everybody else just has the one game to play, and uh, they're well and truly clear of Arsenal. Chelsea, look at Chelsea down there. Uh, they've, I mean, they're safe from relegation, and there was a point where they were about four or five points above the relegation. So them and Spurs have not had good seasons. But uh, yeah, we'll wrap up, I'll wrap up the season, show you how it plays out and, and the highlights of our final games. But we're all here for a cup final, so let's see what we're doing against Liverpool. We're expecting a, a defensive 4-3-3. We're going to be playing more or less the same way. And this is the team that we're sending out to hopefully get our second cup of the season. So it's Henderson in goal. Taylor comes in for the injured Shaw with Tamori, Maguire, and Juan Basaka, the rest of the def uh, defense. Harry Winks is going to play as the deep-lying playmaker. I played him there against Arsenal, and he looked really, really good. So we're going to give him the start there. Bellingham and Longstaff, who's done well when he plays. So again, I'm going to give him the start in the final, see how he gets on. It'll be Greenwood and Sancho out wide. It'll be Kane up top, a bench of Heaton, Holgate, Devine as the backup left back. Garner, Loftus-Cheek, Edwards and Rashford. Let's see if we can do this. 
we can see the team sheets there. Now, of course, the big news, as you heard uh, before, is no Mo Salah for them. He is injured and misses the game. Otherwise, though, it's still a very, very strong-looking Liverpool side, isn't it? So, what do we want to say to this? Show to everyone that you're winners. I want you to... Uh, fanta fanta what do I say? What do I say? I mean, Phelan says, get out there and prove to everyone that you're winners. Do we just go with Mike on this one? Can we point our finger and uh, pump the fist? Say, go out there and make me proud. And hope for, you know, we can only hope for a better performance than we got against Liverpool in the league. And here we go. Liverpool, you can see their recent form is very, very strong. And, you know, the Paris aside, ours isn't too bad either. Now, one thing Liverpool did do is they came back and beat Real Madrid. They lost 4-1 in Madrid and then uh, won 3-0 at Anfield and won the shootout. So... Or was it away goals? Must have been away goals. Anyway, they went through to the final to play Paris. So they are annoyingly in form as well. But uh, we hopefully learn a few things from when we played against them in the league. And we'll see see what we can do. Ball over the top. Juan Bissaka gets to that. You've got your goalkeeper there, guys. But we uh, play it out between the back four. Four forward for looking for Kane. Kane beats Gomez. Can Harry Kane? Greenwood's there. Sancho is there. Can Greenwood stay on side? We've gone back there for Longstaff. To Winks, back to Longstaff, Kane, good ball for Sancho, but maybe just overcomplicated things a little bit there, but we're going to win the ball back, and, well, where is this highlight going from here? It's a long one, isn't it? Bellingham and Longstaff, Winks, getting a lot of passes together in midfield, which can only be a good thing, but Taylor gives it away, and with the length of this highlight, I'm starting to get a little bit scared. Oh, Origi is ghosted in, how, what is Maguire doing? Let's let's encourage them, I suppose. But Taylor gave the ball away, and I don't understand how Origi has got so... F it's two defenders there. Fair enough, Tomori goes to the ball, but what is Maguire doing? You've got one job, Harry. And in the third minute, we are 1-0 down. And we've got a corner now. Can we level things up nice and quickly? Maguire makes up for Idara. Oh, it barely lasted a minute, their lead, and it is 1-1. Harry Maguire makes up for that uh, suspect piece of defending with a wonderful, wonderful goal. It's not a wonderful goal, but we'll take it. It's a good header at the near post. Becker is, no, oh, Allison is, he's uh, more commonly known, is no chance in goal. And we've got back to 1-1 very, very quickly. Oh, it's a classic final. Two goals inside five minutes. And we've got another chance here now, Taylor to take it. Where's big Harry Maguire? We go for him again. This time it's headed away. Greenwood picks it up. Is he going to do another Arsenal-esque shot? He's got a long way. I tell you what, he got over under it, I should say. Sent it over the bar, but not bad. And still the highlights keep coming. Maguire goes back to Henderson. Forward for Tamori. To Taylor. Longstaff. There's a good ball. He finds Greenwood in behind Robinson. Now can Greenwood, he has to hold it up. Can he get a ball into the box? Bellingham. Come on, Winksy. Bellingham again. Bellingham bends one and it's just over. I tell you what though, we're looking, we're looking decent, aren't we? One Basaka slides in and wins the ball back. Here we go now, coming forward again with Tamori. Gets it wide for Longstaff. There's a good ball for Bellingham through the middle. Bellingham sends Mason Greenwood wide. Look at the bodies in the box. Where's the cross? It's there. It's Harry Kane. And I think Becker saved that he has. How has he done that? Oh, it's so unlucky for Harry Kane. Taylor with the corner. Back post. It's towards goal again. And again, Allison is there. Oh, we should have scored twice in a minute there. That's fine. Let's keep encouraging them. This is so far going well for us. Although the XG would suggest that it's a very even game. Now we've got to show we can defend the corner. Ball in. It is not the best, but Henderson is there. And is that the highlight? Henderson gets it forward quickly. Finds Sancho. Sancho back for Bellingham. Longstaff. So far, Longstaff's looked at home in there, hasn't he? That's a good ball for Kane. Kane for Greenwood. Now can Greenwood find a shot? Oh, look at Harry Kane. He can't miss. Mason, Greenwood and Harry Kane combined. Number 29 this season for Harry Kane. And it is 2-1, and that was a wonderful, wonderful play. Really, really good. The front three combined. Sancho into Kane. Kane sending uh, Greenwood in. And they look at Kane. No one picked him up. Gomez just watched him. And he had the goal just begging. 
and he just tapped it in wonderfully and it is 2-1 we've turned it around let's give them some praise now and well you almost don't want half time to come we look very much the better side despite going behind in this one winks to one basaka first time pass not quite accurate enough but we pick it up again with winks long staff it's oh we just can't if we can get that third goal what we don't want is a sucker punch before half time it would feel very unfair to go in at 2-2, two -two, but Greenwood makes it through. He's onside, the linesman stood still, but I think it's going to count. And in just before first half stoppage time, we make it 3-1. And this game is a destruction of Liverpool through 45 minutes. It'll be a tutorial for next season, how to beat Liverpool. Oh, good ball from Bellingham. Greenwood on the chest. It's been given, so he was onside. It was close. If we get another look, I'd love to see the... The VAR lines, but it doesn't look like we're going to. But at half time, it is 3 1 to Manchester United. And that is, well, it's been superb, hasn't it? Point the finger. Do not get complacent here, guys. We are still 45 minutes away. We'll pump our fists. We've demotivated Mason Greek. Surely he'll be fine. Come on, Mace. Can we give you. No, I've already, already done the midfield. I always feel like the, those wingers in that role, they should, be count, they should count as attackers, not midfielders. But anyway. In fantasy football, I feel otherwise when I get all those players in my team. <laughs> so you, you can't have it both ways. Now, they've taken Mane off. They have two. So no Mane, no Salah. Are they already protecting players for the Champions League final? Now, of course, they could do a treble, couldn't they? They've already won the league. Champions League final to come. Ball in. Can one sucker win that? He can. So we're doing ourselves another favour here by not allowing our biggest rivals. I think Liverpool would still be our biggest rivals. Oh, is it Manchester City? Let me know, Manchester United fans. Who's the bigger rivalry? Liverpool or Manchester City? But one of the big two anyway. We can stop them from doing a treble, which would be very nice. Taylor wins the header. But, I mean, we would expect a reaction from Liverpool. And I think by the uh, looking of this highlight, we're getting it. Maguire! Oh, and it's just over. And I don't think it was Henderson's save either. It wasn't. So we maybe just about got away with that. Look at the shots now. Liverpool have come roaring back in this second half. We probably don't need to attack them, to be honest, at 3-1 up. But I'll be more than happy if this second half just ticks by. And we've got another chance from a free kick. Greenwood, it's not the greatest, is it? It was into a decent area, to be fair to Greenwood. I just don't, We weren't quite all on the same wavelength there. But 15 to play. Now, if we could just not concede a goal... And we can sort of enjoy the last 15 minutes. That would be nice. But the second half, is, is it's not been as comfortable as the first. And I really didn't want half time to come for this exact reason. Come on, boys. Can we go and get the fourth goal that would surely, surely wrap this thing up? Oh, we're in behind one Wambasaka. But uh, Henderson's there to make it a relatively comfortable save in the end. Ten to go. And Sancho is injured. All right, we'll stick Rashford on. He can play the exact same role. Hopefully, that's not too bad for Sancho. But this is essentially our last game of the season. We have two Premier League games left, but they don't mean anything to us, really. We just need to try and wrap up second. And to be honest, second or third doesn't really matter, other than bragging rights to get ahead of Manchester City. Minamino's got in again here. And this time, he has stuck it away. And it's never easy, is it? It is never easy. Uh, all right, we'll have to tell him to focus. And I wonder, looking at that, I mean, Henderson's not covered himself in glory there either. I wonder if looking at that, we might want to, def well, what we probably want to do is just start and close it down as well, don't we? The second half has been a very different game to the first half. We'll just drop that line off a little bit. Uh, I mean, they shouldn't... We're trying to defend narrow. We're trying to stop them from coming inside. I want to keep putting pressure on them. We've just got to see this thing out now. Let's go defensive. And I think we've done it, have we? Yes, we have. There we go. FA Cup to go alongside the Carabao Cup. Excellent stuff. 3-2. We have beaten Liverpool. But we blew away in the first half, didn't we? Harry Maguire. I mean, it was a disastrous start as well. But Maguire's head up almost instantly got us back level. And then, arguably, until the last few minutes of the game, we never look back. So, there we go. One, two, three. Hooray! All right. Well, let's hope it's not the uh, the last time we lift this trophy in the, season, in the series. 
Well done, mate. You've made Manchester proud. Yeah, thanks, Monty. Thanks, mate. Um, you know, it's uh, it's good to beat a very good Liverpool team here today. And uh, I tell you what, Big Hazard saved this all from a rollicking at half time with his quick equaliser. I can tell you that for nothing. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can build on this now, take this form, take this performance level into next season and um, go from strength to strength. So it was a good final, wasn't it? I mean, look at the XG there. It was relatively even. And like I say, we just did enough in that first half to, to see the game off, really. Uh, what do we want to say to that? Congratulations, boys. That was a good performance. So Manchester United lift the FA Cup, celebrate a double. It is a double, not the double good. Uh, we've got a little bit of money in the bank. The Sancho injury is not even that serious. And Villain leads Manchester United to glory. Something we never thought any of us would hear. <laughs> would hear us say but you know considering season one only English players it's difficult to, to be disappointed with uh, well hopefully it'll be second in the league we'll be back in a second to confirm that two cups as well semi-finals of Europe it's not been too bad but guys I say wait right there and I will play through the rest of this season then we'll be back for uh, the recap of that and our end of season awards all right, welcome back. The Premier League season has ended. We knew we were going to finish second. We had games against Brentford and Everton to go so let's see how that went starting with the Brentford game we fell behind early. Loftus Cheek played in Rashford to pull us level after half time. Before Cook's first United goal sealed the three points. So, for a meaningless game after a cup final win, you know, we did okay in this one, to be honest. We fell behind early, but. We came back well, which is good. We won the game, which is important. And uh, we gave out a debut in this one to young, promising left-back Logan Pye. You know, he's, he's developing well. He's been playing well for the kids. So we gave him a game, and it was disappointing, to be honest. But <laughs> he's only 18. We'll give him time. The final game of the season was against Everton. We fell behind in the 89th minute. But Longstaff played in Ethan Ennis to tie it up immediately. So, to be honest, a disappointing final game of the season. This is the game we really didn't show up for. Again, uh, well, it, to be honest, it was partly my fault. Hi, uh, Isaac Hayden, you can see they got injured in the 26th minute. So he was out, and I didn't put a right back on the bench, which was stupid. So I had to, we had to play Taylor over there. Logan Pye came back on. Uh, we also gave a couple of youngsters some game time in this one. Uh, Forson came in. He's, we saw him earlier on this season. He was around the first team squad. He's gone back down to the under-23s, and you can see he's developing on nicely. Only 17 as well, so real star of the future there, potentially. And the other player that got some game time is Ethan Ennis, uh, who came off the bench and won us, the, won us the point, basically. Again, another promising attacking player. We have seen him a little bit. Did he play? What did he play? Oh, he's come off the bench in the Premier League before. And, uh, yeah, popped up and got the goal. We played him as a number 10 in this one. I'm not completely sure what he is, but, you know, when you get a goal off the bench, I'll take that when it earns a point. I also used this game to have a look at uh, well, Longstaff and, a, and, and Garner in a couple of different positions. Longstaff, I think, is actually going to be a useful player for us. Fry, it was his sort of last chance to show to me that he can play at the Premier League level. He wasn't terrible. I'm still not completely convinced. I think we can strengthen there ahead of next season. But that means the final Premier League table looks like this. We are second. We finished six points behind Liverpool, four points ahead of Manchester City Villa going to the Champions League, which is excellent for them, and if only that can happen in real life. And the relegated teams are Brentford, Watford, and Crystal Palace. So that brings us now to our end-of-season awards. So I will see you after the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Manchester United end-of-season awards! Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, it was great to beat Liverpool in the final, wasn't it? Thank you, everybody. Thank you and welcome to the end of season awards for Manchester United. It's been a very memorable first season under the uh, new philosophy of England players only. Two cups in the cabinet, second in the league, semi-finals of Champions League. It's not too bad, is it? The people to thank for that are, of course, the players. You've all been wonderful, boys. Wonderful stuff. Let's see more next season, though. first award is the golden pen which goes to this season's signing of the season and we made a few we spent a lot of money made a lot of quality signings and a couple of bad ones uh, but this is of course for the best one of all and at 96 million pounds also the most expensive 
the golden pen goes to Harry Kane. The next award is the golden card, which goes to the player with the worst discipline this season. And this guy, well, I'm going to be honest, a surprise packet. Uh, I signed him slightly in desperation, but turned himself into a very decent, if nothing more than that, right back. So, without any further ado, with 11 yellows, the golden card goes to Isaac Hayden. The next award is the golden bullseye, which goes to the player with the best pass completion rate. And this guy went from a villain very quickly to a hero in the final. And uh, he also had a 97% pass completion rate through the season. So, congratulations. The golden bullseye goes to the captain. Harry Maguire. The next award is the Golden Spoon, awarded to the player who feeds the strikers, uh, the player with the most assists, of course. And a uh, bit of a low tally this season, I've got to be honest. We had two players joint on nine, uh, but this man wins having made less appearances. So congratulations goes to Jaden Sancho. The next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to the player that we can rely on, the man with the highest average match rating, and, uh, well, in the case of this season, also the man that drags us down. So an anchor in uh, two ways, I suppose. But with an average match rating of 7.55, he was superb for most of the season. Congratulations, Luke Two-Footed Shaw! The next award comes from the medical department. It is the Golden Cross awarded to this season's most injured player. And this guy, when he wasn't injured, he was absolutely superb. And uh, when he gets injured, he gets injured properly. So with 53% of the season miss, congratulations to Marcus Rashford. The next award is the Golden Soother awarded to the baby of the team at this season's best young player. And at 24, it annoys me, I'll be honest, when a 24-year-old wins best young player. But that's what's happened this season. And he doesn't not deserve it. I think that made sense. Uh, so congratulations. Go to Aaron Juan Versaca. Now it's time for one of the big ones. It is time for the Golden Boot awarded to this season's top goal scorer. And, well, we've seen him up here already tonight. We know who it is. He was superb. 29 goals in the end he ended up with. So congratulations to Harry Kane. The next award is the Horse's Ass, awarded to this season's worst player. And it was difficult to award a player uh, this over the course of a whole season. But there was one player that really did let us down when we didn't need it. So the Horse's Ass this season goes to Luke Two-footed lunge, Shaw. Now it's time for an award that means a lot to the players. It's time to award the Viewers Player of the Year. I want to thank everybody who nominated a player and everybody who voted as well. And, uh, well, it was fairly unanimous as to who the winner is. So your Viewers Player of the Year for 2022 is... Harry Kane. Now, before we get to awarding this season's uh, Player of the Year, we do need to acknowledge the team of the season. So if you just direct right up to the screen, you'll see the goalkeeper is Henderson. The back four is Shaw, Maguire, Tamori, and Juan Basaka. Your midfielders are Ronaldo Vieira, Bellingham, and Loftus-Cheek. We love a Darryl, double barrel, don't we? The wingers are Sancho and Greenwood. And the striker is, of course, Mr. Harry Kane. Congratulations, guys. You've all had wonderful seasons. Well done. And now it's time for the big one to award the Golden Star for this season's most valuable player. And I'm going to be honest, a surprise. Really is a surprise. We had a lot of good players this season. We had Phil Jones as well. But uh, the winner of the Player of the Year is the goalkeeper, Dean Henderson. Well done. Congratulations to Dino and the rest of the winners this evening. And uh, that brings us to the end. 
So uh, it's been a good season, I'd say. This uh, English-only era has got off to a positive start. Hopefully next season we can go one better in the league, two better in Europe, and hold on to these cups as well. But it's going to be a busy summer as we look to build and strengthen further. So I look forward to seeing you all back again at Old Trafford next season. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening as well. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So there we go, end of season awards done for the first season. Let's have a quick look at this review. Now, the arrivals, there was a lot of them, wasn't there? Let's go through and see how the board rated them all. Uh, Charlie Taylor, only a D. That's a bit harsh on him, I think. He played quite well when he played. Mabadidi, I think, was a star, uh, and he was rated a C. Harry Kane, unsurprisingly, is the signing of the year. He was superb. 29 goals in all competitions. Sancho well, wasn't one of ours, uh, so it doesn't get a ranking. Uh, Tamori, did, he was solid enough, wasn't he? We have the option to buy him for $57 million. And like a few of you have said, who else are we going to get? So I think we will need to trigger that. Uh, Marcus Edwards, he was a good signing for us, and uh, a B-, minus according to the club. Andy Carroll. Now, he did exactly what I wanted him to do. He scored nine goals, two assists. He played those uh, cup games and sort of those ones that we didn't really want to, to play uh, the likes of Harry Kane in. We won the Carabao Cup largely because of Andy Carroll. I think a C- minus on him is a little bit harsh. That being said, uh, he can leave now. <laughs> Ruben Loftus-Cheek, a B-. minus. Again, I think he did... Pretty much what we wanted him to do for £10 million. Fry is a C plus. I'm not completely convinced he'll be around next season. Yeah, I, he's not a Premier League player, is he? He's a good championship player, bottom of the half of the Premier League. Hopefully we can get our money back for him. Ronaldo Vieira, again, maybe slightly overpaid for him. But at the time, sort of last summer, when we needed to build a squad, I think he was... I th again, don't regret signing him. He played well when we needed him to. Isaac Hayden, uh, yeah, again happy with him b minus he's rated aaron ramsey hasn't really particularly worked out but i mean he's not been bad but he's young so we'll give him time harry winks i thought was superb for us uh the fact that he is an e i think is disgusting uh mason holgate again good solid uh, season from him bellingham it was a star um Surprise, he's only rated a C. Longstaff for a million pounds. Yes, please, we'll do that again and lewis cook 10.25 million uh Again, a C plus. And Mola, he was in on loan. We will be uh, signing him for 900 grand, I think it is, and possibly just promptly moving him on. He's still young with room to develop, but we'll just kind of see what happens with that. Transfers out. Did anybody go on and do anything? Ronaldo, not the greatest, to be fair, was he? You can see everybody there. Uh, I mean, some of these guys we obviously wouldn't have sold, but obviously the conditions of the series means that they had to, they had to move on. So there we go. We can kind of see how everybody there has been getting on and i think we're beyond players that we sold at this point let's go and have a look at the season results it's gone i think about as well as we could have hoped second in the premier league i think is brilliant i know there's a lot of you at the start of the season that thought we might struggle to get champions league football we were massively helped let's not pretend we weren't by chelsea struggling newcastle i thought would be a lot better and spurs as well though we did take harry kane off them and uh yeah I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely, to be honest, I'm ecstatic with second. That's that's really good. We can build off that for next season. 28 wins, which I think was uh, equal a club record as well. Champions League, to get to the semi-finals was brilliant. To get absolutely pounded by Paris was not so good. But I think getting to the semi-finals was, uh, was fine. Uh, FA Cup, of course, we managed to go and win that earlier, which was good. And the Carabao Cup also we won, though not as convincingly. Took penalties, didn't it, against... Um, you can see there, four goals. It was uh, Andy Carroll. He, he, he was good. I think, Andy Carroll for what we needed him to be. The biggest win, a poor Solihull Moors, a 6-0 there. The match to remember, a 1-1 away to Benfica. I would have thought there's other games to remember than that. And the goal of the season, which we'll come back to momentarily, was Harry Kane's wonderful strike against Burnley. We are a, world, uh, a worldwide reputation club. That's all fair enough. Harry Kane, unsurprisingly, was the top shirt sale, along with Sancho, Greenwood, Rashford, and Bellingham. I don't think there's any surprises there at all. The team of the season, let's have a look at this. Henderson in goal is just, at, well, who else was it going to be? Ronaldo Vieira is maybe surprising, though he was there for most of the season. I don't think it's, you can't really argue with too many of those, I don't think. Uh, Rashford, I think, is probably unlucky, but he just happened to be injured for a lot of the season and then back up to Harry Kane. Uh, because of it so let's have a look here fans player of the year was dean henderson that's a little bit of a surprise perhaps young player was one but sucker at 24 that annoys me that he gets that but it's not his fault harry kane signing of the season uh worth level goal the season will come back to he was a top goal scorer sancho 
Of course, with the golden spoon for most assists. We don't give out man of the match awards on the night, but Harry Kane won that. Luke Shaw was the golden anchor with a 7.6 average rating. Clinton Moller. He has the most completed passes per 90 minutes. So maybe there is a player there we need to look to hang on to. Uh, in terms of record breakers, well, that's just a new record, isn't it, for Sancho? Uh, we've got most man of the match awards. I think it's just a new record. The worst discipline, the golden card. Well done to Isaac Hayden with his 10 yellows. And uh, the record transfer fee, the 95 million that we paid for Harry Kane. So history in the making, two cups this season. And hopefully there'll be a lot more of that to come in future seasons. Let's have a quick look here. Club vision expectations. So next season, we want to qualify for the Champions League again and reach the semi-final. So they're not asking for much there, are they? Which is a little bit frustrating. There's the uh, team dynamics. Rashford, Kane and uh, Maguire are the team leaders. And we can see everybody else there. It's going to be an interesting summer. Of course, next episode will be a summer transfer special. We'll do the team meeting off camera. The injury report, it was, of course, Marcus Rashford picking up the uh, the Golden Cross. He was just had a couple of bad injuries this year, didn't he? Missed over half the season. And that is that Kane was the Premier League's top goal scorer. So well done to Harry. 100% deserved. And I bet he played less games as well, only playing 26 games and everybody else that was on that list. Well, he must have because two others had 23 goals as well. Greenwood was the young player of the year. Well done to him. He got better and better the longer this season went. And as a right winger, as opposed to an inverted or Roman tour or anything, he was, he was absolutely brilliant. Henderson was second in the Golden Glove and the team of the season, well, Maguire got in there along with Harry Kane and otherwise it's just a Liverpool select. Oh, Dwight McNeil from Burnley got in there as well. Well done him. But that brings us now, of course, to goal of the season. If you're new to the channel, the way this works is that uh, the, the goal that was given, the Harry Kane goal that was given by the game, plus three others I deem worthy will be available to vote. So similar to voting for player of the year, there'll be a link at the top of the description just down below. Click on that and vote for which of the four goals uh, you think has been our best goal, and we'll show you which one it is early next season. If you've enjoyed this season, guys, make sure you hit thumbs up. I think, let me know what you think. I think we just about overachieved with what uh, I was expecting when we started this season. Um, it's going to be a big summer, and hopefully we can go a little bit better again next season. So enjoy uh, goals as uh, you to try that again enjoy goals of the season even and i'll see you next time for a summer transfer special take care Here are our top four goals from the 21-22 season. Don't forget to vote for your favorite.